up everybody, Trip Smith here and we are currently between adventures so that means we are going to be working on the boat a little bit. We have some good upgrades coming to the trailer and the boat and the electrical system. All these upgrades are in order to make the boat more adventure ready and more adventure capable and also upgrades to the trailer to make it more road ready because we have some bigger trips coming. So really quick we'll go over some of the parts and pieces that we will be putting onto the boat. We still have like a big solar panel coming and a big lithium ion battery coming. For the stuff you can see we have now, I got some new dock lines, I've been needing those. I have a new winch for the trailer because mine kind of messed up on the last trip. I have some new straps because I just need those and you'll see why. I bought some new electrical connectors, some really you know high quality ones, better than the cheap ones that I have. I have some new stainless steel snaps because I need to fix some of my canvas and cushions. This is a special thing that's gonna allow us to pass the wires from the solar panel down into the boat correctly and in a good way instead of just down through the window like we have. This is a fancy battery monitor that will be going into our new power system. A new USB charger thing because you guys know that the other one is jacked up when we bought it. This is a battery fuse thing of a jig. I don't know. Some guy online I said I needed to get it, so I got it. And this is just some little dashboard organizer that a company sent me. So first, let's check out these dock lines. You know, it's hard buying dock lines online or rope online in general because you don't know if it's good quality rope because there is junky rope and there is good rope. And I think I got some good rope here. I hope so. Inosidir? I don't know. But these are half inch by 25 foot dock lines. A lot of them that you're gonna be looking at are gonna be like 15 foot dock lines or 20 foot dock lines. You want longer dock lines, all right? One reason I'm buying new dock lines is because some that I have are short or they're just janky. And after spending so many days and your know, time's approaching the dock, I know which dock lines are my favorite and I have one that is this size and it is absolutely my favorite. It's got a nice big loop in one end, very important for going around the cleat on your boat. And then all this is done really, really nice. And these weren't too expensive. But this is kind of one of those things that you don't want to buy the cheapest thing of, I promise. Okay? Kind of like a good anchor. You want a good anchor. Yeah, I think these are going to be very nice. All right, so the next upgrade, we'll go ahead and we will install this winch. So if we come out here, well, you can see what's going on here. <laughs> when I finished the last adventure, I was winching the boat up and I was just getting it tight and it just popped it. But you know, this is part of the strap where it's getting a lot of, you know, I'm sure UV damage and stuff like that. So it just weakened it. So what I ended up doing in a pinch, I just tied a bowline right here and it held wonderfully. And of course I still have my safety chain here. But this old winch here, it's kind of jacked up. You know, this part's not really working very, very well and it just, Instead of just replacing the strap, I just elected to replace the whole winch. Uh oh. Handle's on the other side. Wait, no, it ain't. Wait a minute. Oh, don't tell me this. It ain't gonna fit. What is this like? Left handed? No, I think it goes like this. Yeah. Like that. Mm -mm. The holes don't line up very good at all. All right, got that one checked off the list. So next up, we have these ratcheting boat trailer straps. And they are made to replace these straps on the stern, which mine are old and rusty, and they're not the best. And they kind of leave some marks on my boat a little bit. So if I could get a little bit nicer strap, it wouldn't hurt my feelings. Work. 
Yeah. <laughs> a little sideways. Good enough for me, I reckon. Okay, folks, it is another day, and we have a new shipment of gear that has arrived. We've been waiting on, but we are still waiting on some other things, so we kind of had to flip flop something. But we got our solar panel, which is the main upgrade that we're going with. We also got some new, like, funky fenders we're going to be trying on the boat. Some ah, electronic pieces that make all this stuff go and the electricity flow from here to there and in the right way, in the right whatever. I'm learning about all this, okay? We also have an inverter that we're going to need when we run off our power bank, or actually off our house battery, but the house battery didn't come in. But fortunately, another company contacted me about a new power bank, and it has a really cool feature that I have been wanting to see on other power banks that I haven't seen yet. So I was like, uh, yeah, sure. I would love to have your power bank, especially since I need it like right now. This is a Alcatel power bank, and I'll show you what the cool feature is that it has. Although it has several, to be honest with you. Uh-oh. <laughs> there we go. You got to hold it down a little longer. So I haven't charged it or anything, but the cool feature it has is right under this little flap, there's a XT60 plug. That is nice because it gives me a great way to connect to my sub panel, which you remember on my other power bank where I had to like take it apart and like butcher this thing up to get one of those plugs? Well now this one comes with it. Why don't they all come with that? I guess there's not many people are hooking these power banks to like a DC sub panel power supply, but I am, so I need that feature. <laughs> Thank gosh this one has it. Why is the lighting so terrible? Anyways, it's not the perfect lighting. I'm sorry, but there are some other cool features. Like this one, it has a storage compartment for the charging cable and stuff, which I really like that, and also, the charging cable, like you, you know how normally on like a laptop or something, you have, you plug it to the wall and then goes into a black box and then it goes into whatever you're charging. This doesn't have that. So that part is built in. So this is your only charging cable when you plug it into a wall outlet. I like that feature. Then it also comes with a few other ones like to plug into a solar panel and stuff like that, which is great. And also something else for those of you who know what I'm talking about, this is a pure sine wave, which essentially for those of you who don't know, like me, because I didn't know till like the other day when I was researching inverters. It's like a more pure and steady uh, electrical current. So some appliances need a good clean current and it costs extra money to do that kind of stuff, but this has it. So you may be wondering, okay, Trip, well, how does this change the system from what I was originally planning to do? Well, okay, this replaces several things. The inverter, you don't need an inverter anymore. You don't need a solar charge controller. And this is the one that came with the solar panels and you also don't need a separate house battery. Now, does that mean that this is better than the other? No, not necessarily, and probably no. I think this is um, this is actually going to be less capacity. I really don't know how many. Yeah, probably like less than half or half. I think actually less than half of the capacity, but it's just gonna be a simpler, easier setup and no uh, you know, funky wiring and things like that. So we're gonna roll with this for now. But then as the other battery comes in, we're gonna hook it up and I think we may make our boat where it's like ambidextrous, where it can you know, hook up to different power sources and power supplies so we can learn what we do and don't like the most. Because I don't know, it could be interesting to have something just like a plug and play right here. Cause you know, what if you need your battery bank and stuff in different things? Like what if you have an overlanding trailer or what if you just wanna put it in your truck? Or what if you want to take it in the house? If you have a power outage, something like this, could be good to have where you just unplug it and go because with this system and a separate battery you just you couldn't really do that so let's get rolling the first thing and i think the most daunting task we're going to have is mounting this to the boat but i think i've got it figured out it's not going to be too terrible uh. ah See that gap right there where this is not square? Well, that's put me off by about that much over here. Yeah, I don't know. I went to think about that for a couple days, but I'm at the end of my rope for today. Today's actually my birthday. Turned 35 today. Thank you, Lord, for the wonderful years. But I think I may be done for the day. I need to go work out and stuff before uh, we go out to dinner tonight with the family. So 
but it's probably a good thing to let this kind of sit and stew and me just think about the pros and cons and maybe the better options okay people i think we are set <laughs> let me show you what i did i ended up taking another piece of this starboard and just bolting it down to the bottom now this one it does have a wing nut up on the top you can kind of make it out up there so if i want to take it off i can and I have the same setup over here on this side. Then I ran my wires down. And they go into this little, uh, let me show you this sucker. My adhesive is still drying, or it probably should be good by now though. Although it did kind of make a mess. It's gonna be good enough for now. I still need to clean up some of the glue that when it shifted around and stuff, but this little port takes us down below. They come into the cabin here, they run down with this wire, down into the countertop, and then they run back up in there, boop, 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 all the way across, through that bulkhead, then just down into here for now, and then right around the corner here, and they plug into the side, right there. Right now it's pretty overcast, our input is 14 watts, and we are using 8 watts because I have some lights running and the radio is on standby. But we are currently charging. Then I have this wire coming out of my XT60 plug and it is ran boop, kind of up the same direction up through these wires here and right out here to this mess. This is the plug that I had plugging into another power bank, the smaller one that I would use. And this feeds my sub panel and it you know has a main switch where I can kind of turn it on and off. Or I can also power up this panel here. So I can either run just my accessories and some lights or I can make it run, you know, the major stuff on the boat as well. I think the only other change I may do is I'll kind of put some, I don't know, some sort of padding or something around this thing so it doesn't you know, shuffle around while I'm underway. I want it to be secure and I don't want the wires to be bumping into the bulkheads and things like that. But I think I realized that I may not need to take it down as much as I thought. Fortunately, this thing, it's pretty stable, you know, up here. And so while I'm underway, whether it be on the water or down the highway, I think it's going to ride here pretty well. So I don't need to remove it as much. And one of the main reasons I wanted to have it removable is so that I could put my cover on my boat and not have to worry about the sharp corners of this, you know, tearing holes in my cover. But I think I have a solution for that. <sighs> That's where the pool noodle comes in. <laughs> I basically put slits in my pool noodle and now I can kind of snap these onto the edges of the solar panel so that whenever the cover goes up over it, these kind of make a nice soft rounded corner and now no more torn cover. So it's really going to be great to just pretty much leave that thing up there almost all the time. So I may even change up the way that I mount it. I don't know. This may work. I'm really going to be happy to have this and not to worry about my portable one flopping around and having to deploy it and taking it in and out when it rains and stuff. This sucker's just up there and it's gonna be generating some juice. Appreciate you tuning in. Thank you, Booge RV and Alcatel for the power bank. It's gonna be great. Now we're ready for next week's adventure.